designed with balance and harmony in mind. Built to harmonize beauty and precision, I present Project Wavepoint. Every detail, every contour was designed with intention. The seamless curves, the lattice support, even down to the color choice. All pre-planned to maximize form and function and let them converge in perfect harmony. Now a few questions remain. Does it actually perform as designed? How does it sound? Join me as we explore the journey behind the 20th iteration of my speaker building journey. In front of us is number 20, a 3.5 inch driver in a horn based enclosure. This is a complete redesign using all new parts. It still screws together as the last generations have. This generation uses the flat spring design spider and a short underhung voice coil. The motor is a brand new design utilizing neo magnets in an array and laser cut plate steel. The enclosure is a capsule shaped pod that feeds the horn that also doubles as the stand. The supports are carbon fiber pet G. The side view gives a good idea of the nature of construction. Along with an overview of the parts, we will go into depth on the suspension, motor, and cone later in the video. The driver was designed with ease of construction in mind with plenty of tolerance for adjustments for easy former and motor alignment. Moving on to the split view, we get a better understanding of how all the bits interact together. First up is the new surround design. It's a mix of accordion and half round, giving a lot of cone freedom. We can now see the threads that attach the upper and lower portions together, sandwiching the flat spring spider in between. As stated, the voice coil is a short underhung design since the top plate is so thick. The motor is held together with three M4 screws and six quarter 20 bolts that also tie the motor to the bottom of the frame. The box is an elongated sphere to direct waves rearward and out of the horn where the gradual curve will redirect the back wave to the front listening area and help reinforce the front waves of the speaker. The motor of the speaker is based on 24 neo ring magnets that are held in place with six quarter 20 bolts and sandwiched between the top and bottom plates of laser cut steel. The bottom plate is a laser cut piece of mild steel measuring 12.7 millimeters or half inch thick. The magnets are arranged in six groups of four spaced evenly around the motor and the top plate is 9.5 millimeters thick or 3 eighths of an inch. The cone is designed to be vacuum formed to keep the weight down. I have a video in the works about this process. It uses PETG as the material and a total weight was less than one gram. The spider is still a flat spring design. I printed a few variations, one in PLA, one in PTG, one in 70D TPU, and then I tested them to find out which one I liked best. I settled on the TPU as it was the most flexible. This was also around one gram in weight. The surround was the big improvement for the design this time. I worked with about eight or nine different designs to get to this final shape. And while it may not be optimal, it did keep control of the cone, and I was aiming more for a mid-range driver this time, so I wanted the QTS a little higher, which I felt the suspension was an easy and cheap place to manipulate that parameter. The surround is also oversized for a traditional 3.5 inch driver, making the cone smaller. It offers the room to create the tangency needed in the curves of the surround shape and maintain flexibility without creating a compliant mechanism. Now that is all I have for design info on the project. I'm currently in the process of creating a Discord server as a few commenters have requested, and I would look for that in the coming month or two. I can go into much more detail about the builds there as I won't be trying to squeeze this into a 10 to 12 minute video. Now a word about today's sponsor before we move on to the playtest. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, your one-stop shop for high quality PCB manufacturing. CNC machining, and 3D printing services. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, PCBWay offers precision, reliability, and fast turnaround times to bring your ideas to life. From prototype to induced parts, they've got you covered. Check out PCBWay.com and take your project to the next level.
Now that we've heard the speaker, we're going to dive into the tech side. So looking into DATS, the graph indicates that the motor is fairly strong. The SPL is showing that this is making 80 decibels with 1 watt at 1 meter, which indicates that the efficiency is higher than some of the previous ones. The FS is reasonably high. This could be due to the stiffer suspension, or it's a direct result of the diet I have been putting my speakers on. As we see, the moving mass is now down to around 5.7 grams, and when the moving mass falls, the FS rises. This is merely due to resonances, and lighter objects tend to resonate at a higher frequency. I did get the QTS to be high, but I was aiming more for a mid 1.5. However, I'm still happy with it here. I also should have put it in a sealed box due to the high QTS, although I elected against that and would tune around the inevitable peak that will become of it. Overall, I think I hit close to the mark for being a mid-range driver. Now let's move on to REW and see if this response graph verifies that. So I'm going to say right now, this was one of the loudest drivers I've built and tested, and it could be due to the reduced RE value, the resistance, or it could be due to the higher efficiency value, but it peaked at 112 decibels at 6,500 Hz. I also feel that I succeeded in creating a mid-range driver as between 170 Hz and 6,500 Hz, it never falls below 95 decibels. This means with a little DSP work, it could have a fairly flat response throughout the whole mid-range. It does take a huge tumble after 6,500 though, which it's still usable there, it's just not as desirable at those levels. Below 170 Hz, however, it is fairly useless, and a high-pass filter around 100 Hz would be a good idea. Overall, I'm very happy with the graph and the first run on the new motor. I'll put up the far field response along with tests at 45 degree off center for both near field and far field. I would not look into that far field as much as the room hasn't been designed for good quality tests. It's just for me to use to compare my apples to my apples for future builds and my previous builds. Lastly, I will put up a distortion graph before moving on with the closing statements. So pause here if you want to look at those. Overall, I'm very happy with the conclusion of this project. The updated motor works, and it's much more accessible to fellow makers, as the cnc motor plates I've been using were astronomically expensive compared to this current motor. I have a vacuum forming video in the works, so keep an eye out for that one. I'm also closing in on Coil Winder version 3. I'm currently coding the Arduino to make it all work, and then it will be out, so I'm hoping for that in quarter one of this year. Also, as stated earlier, I'm working on a Discord, however, I'm new to creating Discord servers, so I'm still kind of figuring that out, so bear with me. That, however, is all I have for today's video, so leave a like and subscribe if you liked what you saw, and thank you for watching.